Well, it's now been 12 months to the day since Pedalbox Episode 1 hit YouTube. We've done 11 episodes since then, focusing on two cars. We've had one fire in one of them. Might be a low point. And now we're about to make it even better for everyone. We're going to a two a month schedule. And we've picked up another car to work on. Because who doesn't need more projects beside the Golf, the Golf, the Rover, the chassis that we're working on? Why not have a fifth? It's, it seems perfect, right? So this time on Pedalbox, we're finally getting around to building our upper radius arms. And we bought some new shiny bits for the car, finally. Including some coil covers. So, we're back onto the upper arms once again. This is where we started about three episodes ago and then abandoned to do everything else, including our lower arms, which we did last time. And we've delayed it further by cleaning up the chassis and making it look a little bit better, just to not have to do this. So we need to get a few things set up and ready so that we can work out where these need to go. Now all of our hub angles have been set with the drive shaft being level. So we need to make a jig that sits across the top of the chassis legs and holds the hubs with the drive shaft angle flat, which is roughly where we've worked everything out from. So what makes our life easier this time compared to last time is now that we have a fixed lower arm, we have something that holds it in 3D space somewhere, which we had nothing of before. It was just wanging around everywhere and we really had no fixed point of reference that we could easily work off because we weren't sure of so many other things. We could have found them out but this way is just a lot easier. The, the fact that the drive shafts extend and we had various rubber bushings in here that allow it to twist for the toe and everything else, just too difficult to try and get back. But now it's a lot easier. So the other component that we've been waiting on is our rod ends or hind joints depending on which side of the Atlantic you're on. and tube inserts so that we can screw these into here and these can be welded into the end of the tubes to build our arms. The other thing we need, which we have to buy, is our suspension because we need to know where that is going to sit roughly around, roughly in the back of here and what we're going to have to do to avoid hitting the springs and basically everything else through its range of motion. So the jig we're building is pretty simple, a lot nicer to build than the engine frame that we did a few episodes ago. All we're doing, we're putting a great big cross member over the back of the chassis. It's not going to bolt down, it's not going to weld on or anything, it's just going to sit there. And from that, we're basically going to put little hangers that come down and grab onto the hubs. So we're going to have plates on the hubs that we align toe-in and camber-wise to the chassis as we want them. Then we weld those up to the cross member and we basically just hang the whole thing on the back of the car and that sets the hubs in place when we bolt them on. To get the hubs vertical, the easiest way to do that is to use the upper control arms. Because obviously they're designed to be adjustable, we can put those in, in their final positions with their final brackets, and use them to set the position of the hub for building the jig onto. So we fit up our geometry as best as we possibly can. We've still got a bit of positive camber, which we don't want, but we can't get rid of that without fitting our upper suspension arms, which is fair enough, so we need to build them. Once we join the top of this to the chassis, we can then adjust them properly and get exactly what we want. So, we need to find a pivot point for where we want to join this end of the upper arm onto. Now, we had an epiphany, or rather Chris did, some time ago, and the pivot point of our trailing arm at the front here is one of three points of the triangle. This is one point, this is the second point, and the other one is the average as of where we're going to have the two upper suspension arms to join to. So using a bit of rod approximately in line, we can work out roughly where we need to bring this arm to. Now with this front arm, we have a bit of a luxury because it's pretty much a straight line. We don't need to bend around anything, we don't need to avoid anything. We can just make that work, get that one out of the way, and then start looking at the back once we put the suspension turret in, just to see where it's going to end up. So essentially, this is our suspension arm, or at least one of the four we need to make. We have a piece of tube and some inserts. The inserts go into the end of the tubes, and that allows the rod ends to have something to key off. Thread these onto the end of here, and push them in. And in essence, that's basically a suspension arm. It's adjustable at this end, and as you spin this in, the length shortens point to point, and obviously you can adjust this end in much the same way, and they get shorter overall. And that's how you can adjust toe, camber, alignment generally anything around that. So now we just need to make another one of these and then start measuring up for accurate lengths and then we can weld in these inserts and then we're not quite halfway there because the other ones are going to be a lot harder than this. So we've now installed our 
hastily cobbled together suspension arm and obviously it's a bit long so we're going to trim this down and get it back to about here in line with this pivot and then see where we end up we also need to be aware of how much thread we want inside and outside for adjustability later which is probably the only major consideration left after the length of this so one more thing we need to do before we can weld in our inserts we're going to cross drill in two different axes through the uh, suspension arms themselves so that we can plug weld these into place that will give us a lot more strength holding them into the arms as well as the weld around the end so you've settled on the alignment for this rod uh, we've got it 25 degrees swept back from the body and what we've done we've mocked it up made up a couple of little cardboard templates so one on the front that's just supports around the body there one on the back that goes in there we then transferred those to some steel and then we made those into an entire stack that holds our rod end in place so this is pretty much as it's going to exist on the car the washers we're going to replace with proper misalignment washers so that we've got more range of motion but we'll get to that later for the time being this is all going to weld on up in here and we're going to put a couple of little extra welds in extra fillets just to clean it up and join it nicely with the chassis so we're going to get this attached and then do the same the other side so with the forward upper control i'm in we've actually been able to set our camber vertically upright which saves us a bit of work on the jig what we can do now is I'm just mocking up with the other front control arm from the right hand side of the car. We've compressed it all the way in because this is going to be a slightly shorter link on the back here. But if we just attach that onto the hub and pop it up in here, we find that the end of the link comes in perfectly underneath the bottom of the chassis leg and comes right up against the side of our drop down here for the rear end. Which means we get a really good strong attachment point onto the bottom of our chassis leg and the side of the brace bar for the rear end here. Now with this positioning, it turns out we can actually still fit our coilover in place without it getting majorly in the way of anything. So we can get it up to about that angle quite happily so we don't have to have it hanging way out the back to clear everything. We don't have to build a bent arm or anything to clear around it and everything's actually a lot more convenient than we thought. So similar process here to what we did with our front arms. We made ourselves a little cardboard template to fit under the chassis and onto our drop leg there. We then made up metal plates that fit as well and then we drilled those plates to make the actual hookups as we're going to use. So what we can now do is we'll just pop that onto our through bolt there. And there she is, that's our completed rear upper radius arm. So we've now got pretty much effectively a full wishbone arrangement up on the top here. We've still got a single arm underneath. And now we can weld this up, we can start adjusting and get our geometry all good. Here we are with two completed upper control arms. We've got the forward one here set kind of long, rear one set kind of short because the whole system leans back some. Lower arm still in from before, so we should now be able to lift the wheel up slightly or fully and just see what our range of motion is here and see how it behaves. It gets quite stiff up toward the top there, but we can actually make it right up to the bump stop. So that's kind of as we hoped. Now if we take our support out from underneath to see how far down this hangs so that comes down a good way there's a pivot on our lower arm where it attaches to the chassis it's actually only a one it's only a hinge so it can only move that way but the hub because it's pivoting forward from the back here wants to come forward as it falls down which means this joint here which only wants to go that way is trying to go that way it doesn't like that very much so as the hub is moving down this joint's binding up. I reckon it probably would get a lot more ride height if we were able to go down further, but we just can't quite move around there yet. So what we're probably going to do is we're going to lop probably like this end of the lower arm off, pop a little, uh, another one of these, another rod end joint in here, mess around with the bracket a little to make that work, and that should give us a bit more suspension travel and a bit more freedom. The front pivot, again, not actually a proper rose joint, but it's a big, great big rubber bushing, so there's a fair bit of flex in there, so that's not really a problem. And we've now got a pretty pretty good range of motion on our suspension this is actually a lot more than some of the project cars we've got here so loads and loads of room for the suspension to like eat up bumps and track the road and everything so i think we're pretty good here so that's it for another episode we've finally got our control arm sorted it's only taken us four months but next time we're going to be working on the turret so that we can maybe put it on the ground Yep, next steps, we're going to build up a nice big suspension turret, so we're going to bake plate in around here, roughly, haven't really worked out the details. So we're going to build off the back of the chassis leg, build a box up here and a top mount, 
And then, once the suspension is properly supported, we can throw some wheels on it and actually put this on the deck and see what it looks like. Hopefully, it's going to sit nicely. Um, yeah, I think we're going to have to adjust things, but it should be fine. I really? love it. It's going to look bitching.